Welcome to Show and Tell. In this series, I review brand new games quickly and with as much detail as possible. Ready? Go. Mushroom 11 innovates with an ingenious mechanic that I've never seen before. The seven chapters of the game take the player through a few different environments and constantly allows the player to use this mechanic in a myriad of different ways. So the game that pops into everyone's head when you mention gameplay that centers around one core mechanic is, of course, Portal. But the greatness of Portal doesn't come from its ability to showcase a single gameplay gimmick, but the way it manages to contextualize the mechanic within the rest of the game. Portal 2 did this a lot better than Portal 1, and Portal 2 is generally better regarded. Mushroom 11 feels like it's in the Portal 1 stage. I like the way the game looks, but I'd say it really depends on your tastes. The aesthetic fits the world that is presented to us, one that is seemingly post-apocalyptic. There's a lot of browns and greys, and maybe it's just me, but even the bright colours like the goo itself and lava feel kind of toned down, again fitting with the theme. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of contrast between the colours, which isn't my favourite look, but again fits what the developers were going for. I think the highlight of the presentation is the way the goo grows and the sound effects that come with it. It's really well designed and feels satisfying when you get the goo to go the way you want. Speaking of the way the goo works, it's really difficult to explain. Even if it looks like it at first glance, you don't actually play as the goo. You play as a sort of godlike guide for the goo, whose only power is to erase the goo. That sounds really weird, and it kind of is, but basically you have to imagine it as though there is a certain amount of goo that has to be on the screen at all times. If you erase a section of the goo, it will grow back the same amount you erased only from different parts of the goo. This allows you to shape the goo in whatever way you please. You even have a much smaller brush that can make relatively fine modifications to the goo. The game continually presents new challenges to the player, and many times, like Portal, it's about thinking outside the box or approaching the situation differently. In many ways, I consider this a kind of puzzle platformer. The thing that was disappointing for me is that it isn't well contextualized, though. And that's why I compare it to the first Portal, though even then, the first Portal had more of a heart to it than this game. Because really, it feels like a tech demo, and that the whole game is just a stage to show off this one mechanic and not really much more than that. Another game that comes to mind is the first Assassin's Creed. It pretty much totally lacks a story, and while it does have the post-apocalyptic world, it felt like you could have reskinned it with anything. Would this game be different if the goo was instead cotton candy in a cotton candy factory? Not really, not in any big way. So this is what I mean, Portal 1 didn't have the character and charm required to really be a masterpiece, although it was still a great game. Portal 2 built upon the foundations that Portal 1 laid and made a truly groundbreaking game that got and deserved universal acclaim. This game feels like an even more bare bones version of Portal 1, so it shows so much promise and was fun to play and is an all around really good game, but it was also an empty vessel. It doesn't really have a soul to it. So as I mentioned before, the game has seven chapters and each will last give or take 20 to 30 minutes. I think my longest was about 45 minutes and my shortest was 13 minutes, so you'll get about three to four hours out of this game, and maybe more if you go after the collectibles, which I didn't do. $15 is reasonable for that amount of gameplay, and it's pretty worthwhile gameplay too. It's certainly fun, and becomes very challenging the last few chapters, so be aware of that. It's getting a rye seal of approval. I'm recommending it, but if you're only kind of interested in this game, then wait for a sale. Five to ten dollars for this game would be a steal. Thanks for watching. If you found this review helpful, consider leaving a like because it makes it easier for other people to find this video. If not, leave a dislike guilt free, but try and leave a comment telling me why you disliked the video and how it can improve for next time. See ya.